Hi, this is Dan Heisman. Welcome to our YouTube channel where we give videos on helping you try to play chess better, improve your game. I thought I'd try something a little new today. I have no idea how it's going to work, so you'll let me know. We're going to do what I would call slow analysis. Now, we did a, a video on thought process steps, which, you know, I said, you know, there is no one thought process steps, but I gave some because people always want to know what the steps are, even though you don't use steps. And I had a 20 minute video where we thought 20 minutes on a position, whether we liked it or not. This time I thought I would do what I would call slow analysis. I'm going to pick a position that I've never seen before. And if it looks like it's a recapture or something, I'll go to the next position. And I'm going to analyze the position, but I'm going to try to do it very slowly. You know, for those in the audience who kind of don't know what's going on. I'm not going to, you know, do it at my normal speed as fast as I can like I did in the 20 minute exercise. I'm going to try to break it down and show the parts of the analysis and, and what we're doing. See if that's helpful for you. Okay, now I picked a game that was played in the Paris tournament going on this week. It's a speed game, but we just want a position. So I haven't seen this game at all. It's a 5-3 game between Grishik and Nakamura. So we're going to pick a color and a move number and, and analyze the, the position. So let's take, I don't know, let's take black's 22nd move. I have no idea if that's a good one to use. If it's not, maybe we can go to the 23rd move. Let's play out the game real fast to get to the 22nd move. All right, let's see here. We have some sort of Catalan. Okay, knight bd7, knight e4, bishop f4. G5, interesting move by Nakamura. G4. We're looking for maybe Black's 23rd move. Wow, Black already won the D-pawn. Bishop F6, E3, Knight F3. He's giving a pawn back, but he's got uh, extra pawn in the center. Bishop A6, E6, D5, takes. We're looking for Black's 23rd move. There we go. Okay. All right. So we're going to do this and we're going to do it slowly. So if you're doing it as a puzzle, you have to count the material first. And here the material is, you know, queen, two rooks, two bishops, and a knight against queen, two rooks, two bishops, and a knight. Black has six pawns. White has six. White has two pawn islands from A, B, C, and F, G, H. And black has three pawn islands, A, B, D, E, F, and H. Um, let's count what some of the squares that are attacked are. <clears throat> the black D5 square is attacked three times and it's only guarded once, but the bishop on the A6 is pinning the pawn on C4 from taking the pawn on D5, so that's why he can't take it. Now, white has just played rook on f to d1. So we're asking, what are all things that white wants to do? Well, white's knight on c3 is guarded. So probably in some lines, he wants to move the bishop off of d2 and put more pressure on that d5 pawn and indirectly to the queen. Black, on the other hand, has two center pawns with the, in the e and the d files, and white has none. So black would like to get those pawns rolling down the board, but right now, attacking in the center before black's queen and his rooks are ready is going to look a little premature. So, you know, black might want to play a move like d4 and then push e5. That would make uh, d5 weak and would also block his bishop on a6 out of the game. Now black is attacking the pawn on c4 three times and it's only guarded twice let's flip the board around since we're looking for black's move we'll do a flip here okay same position shouldn't matter whether we're analyzing from one side or the other but hopefully it'll make it a little easier to follow if we're looking for black's move with putting black on the bottom all right so we have to ask ourselves the question what happens if we just try to win that pawn on c4. Okay, so we want to visualize the sequence of what happens when we take. Well, clearly, if black just plays d takes c4 and white just tries to recapture 
consistently with B takes C4. And then white continue, sorry, black continues to capture with rook takes C4 or bishop takes C4. He could win the pawn. In fact, bishop takes C4 would hit the queen, which would give him a tempo to try to get out of the pin maybe on the D file. The pin meaning that the white bishop on D2 is going to move and let that rook on D1 pin the knight on D7. So after D takes C4, I don't think white will play B takes C4 because after B takes C4, bishop takes C4, um, black should have a tempo to save himself. For instance, let's take a look at that line. D takes C4, B takes C4, bishop takes C4. If you can't visualize that, the only three pieces that have moved so far are the black's D pawn and white's B pawn and black's bishop on A6, which is now on C4. So D takes C4, B takes C4, bishop takes C4. Let's look at queen to G4, threatening bishop H6, which would pin the knight and threaten the mate on G7. What could black do about that? Well, black could play knight F6 hitting the queen. Black could play knight e5 hitting the queen, or black could just move his queen and try to avoid the pin. I don't think that d takes c4, b takes c4, bishop takes c4, queen g4 is terrible for white, but I think he would just, after d takes c4, he might just move the bishop right away from d2, or he could move queen to g4 right away. So it's pretty it's pretty complicated. Um, you know, obviously Grishik did this on purpose. He he feels intuitively in the speed game that he's going to get a good kingside attack. Black doesn't have his g pawn to protect his king, and that's why white playing moves like queen to g4 or queen to h5. Uh, can make some sense, especially with the black knight on d7. All right, so let's analyze that line again. Uh, d takes c4. Can black, can white just move a piece here? d takes c4. He could play knight e4. He can play bishop to f4. He can play queen to g4. Um, He's got a lot of possibilities. D takes c4. As I said, he could even play b takes c4. I don't think he would. I think he would just let black take that pawn and get the tempo. Um, D takes c4. Let's say white plays queen to g4. D takes c4, queen to g4. I think black could probably play knight to e5, hitting the queen, and White doesn't really have any wonderful discoveries with the bishop on d2 in that position because black can always play knight takes g4 and win the queen. So d takes c4, queen g4, knight e5, and then the knight could go to g6 in some lines if the queen moves. Um, that doesn't look really that bad for for black if white does that. So let's look at some other candidate moves besides d takes c4 and see what else Nakamura can play. Let's look at just playing d4 and hitting the knight. If you play d4 and hit the knight, the bishop on d2 cannot move because we can just take the knight, and even though the rook on d1 would then be pinning the knight on d7, I don't think white's winning his piece back. Um, so d4, black... Oh, White would then have to move the knight, I think. Maybe play knight to e4, threatening knight d6, threatening, you know, maybe bringing the queen up to h5 and then knight g5, something like that. Um, d4, knight e4. If Nakamura then plays e5 to try to get his central pawns rolling, Black might have a move like, um, <clears throat> again, queen h5 or queen g4 or bishop uh, g5. 
And the problem with d5, d4 is even though it gives you a protect the pass pawn, it makes your bishop on a6 really bad. The bishop on a6 um, is kind of out of the game because he can't take on c4 anymore and he can't go back to b7 because after d4 that opens up the diagonal for the bishop on g2. So what black's trying to do here is he's trying to keep all his pieces good but if we look at the position one of the problems with black's position is his queen is on the same file on the d file with the white rook and we've seen a lot of lines already where that rook gets pressure on either on the queen or on the knight on d7 and the rook on f8 isn't developed if black had an extra two tempos here if he had his queen off the d8 square and he had his rook on d8 or e8 then black would have a pretty big advantage here because his extra central control with his extra pawns would mean a lot more but the fact that white is better developed in exchange for those having the better central pawns for black is what's giving black his problems you know he's got a lot of these lines where his pieces just can't jump into the game that well if he can close the game off for a while if d4 could work like after d4 knight e4 if he could just play something like you know queen to e7 and then e5 and f5 or whatever you know he might be okay but again the, the problem with doing that is that bishop on a6 becomes really weak that's the advantage of playing d takes c4 now the disadvantage is it makes those rooks better and it opens up black's queen to to more discoveries on the d file so <clears throat> in general black's trying to develop his queen off of d8 and his rook from f8 especially his queen but he's got to do it very very carefully um, you know white's also threatening in some lines to move the queen and then take on d5 so black's going to have to resolve that problem anyway um, usually when you're analyzing you have a certain amount of generic information which will help you tell you in general what you want to do like here the generic information is black wants to catch up in development black wants to keep his extra central pawns he wants to get those central pawns moving if he can and he wants to make sure all his pieces are good he doesn't want to block his bishop on a6 out of the game but then you have more likely specific analysis like what we were doing before which is suppose we play d takes c4 you know what white's obviously not guard that got that square guarded enough what can white do about it for instance after d takes c4 one of the things white could do is put a third piece on it by simply playing knight to e4 so d takes c4 knight to e4 now the idea is white can take back on the next move and black cannot play c takes b3 because of queen takes a6 winning the bishop so we're looking at the line d takes c4 knight e4 and if c takes b3 question mark queen takes a6 winning a piece so white has a lot of things he can do after d takes c4 we've just looked at knight e4 we looked at moves like queen to g4 um, so black has to come up with all his candidate moves and then he has to analyze each one carefully so so far we've looked at moves like d takes c4 we've looked at moves like queen to getting out of the way somehow maybe queen to e7 or queen to f6 those are possibilities we've looked at d4 to get the pass pawn I guess he has other possibilities knight to c5 might be a move again does expose the queen more to the bishop sorry to the rook on the d1 square so if Nakamura let's say Nakamura plays queen to f6 just for the sake of argument I think what white would want to do then is move the queen so that that the c pawn can take on d5 and make Nakamura decide what to do so for instance after queen f6 maybe white could play something like uh, where could he move the queen he could move the queen to g4 but if he plays queen g4 maybe knight e5 would be okay in fact I'm pretty sure it would be 
So queen f6, where else could the white queen go? I guess I don't see a lot of wonderful squares. He could go to e1 to get out of the pin, but that seems a little strange. Um, so queen f6 is an interesting move. You know, the, one of the problems with playing queen f6 is if you ever play d4, then knight e4 is going to hit the queen. Uh, also, white can simply play something like h4 with the idea of playing bishop to g5, which is not ridiculous. Of course, after queen f6, h4, black could play h6 to stop bishop g5, but that weakens his king side a little bit for not a lot of great reasons. But queen f6 is an interesting move. Queen e7 is also a move that develops the queen, and it gets the queen off of the d8 square, but it does kind of pin the e pawn uh, when black does when white does move the queen and threatens c takes d5. Black can't play e takes d5 because the queen on e7 is not guarded, so that is a problem. But again, we white has to find a good square to move the queen to be able to do that. Um, all right, so let's take a look again at queen f6, queen g4. That's a possibility. Threatening bishop g5, threatening c takes d5. So after a move like queen f6, white would be able to move the queen and threaten to take on d5. And again, black could take on c4. One of the ideas of moving the queen is to take on c4. Now, of course, when you move the queen to f6, you're unguarding the knight on d7, which means when there's exchanges on d5 or c4, then white gets discovered attacks on that knight by moving the bishop on d2 to any square, which would open up the line from the rook onto the knight. So, you know, that's, that's a problem. So far, from what I've seen, I think that queen f6 is an interesting idea. I think d takes c4, allowing white to um, maybe play knight e4, where black could respond something like maybe, oh, what would be a good move there? Can he play, can he play knight e5 to that? It's really complicated, but then again, Nakamura likes complications. Um, that would be a crazy line. I was looking, so we're looking at d takes c4, knight e4, knight e5. Now the bishop could go anywhere, and the rook would attack the queen. The bishop could go to b4 and attack the rook on f8. Very complicated. Okay, so one of the advantages of playing knight to c5 is it guards the bishop on a6, so that in those kind of lines, um, you can threaten to move the pawn on c4. So we're looking at d takes c4, knight e4, but if black plays knight c5, white can probably just play knight takes c5, or he still may have a bishop move there. Again, very complicated. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because we're spending a bunch of time here on this move when, in fact, these guys are playing a speed game, and they're going to be making the move in a few seconds on general principles. Knowing Nakamura's penchant for complications, I would guess he's more likely to play a move like d takes c4 than he would be to play queen f6 or queen e7. Um, again, looking at whether candidate moves have, he could play the knight to e5 right away. Um, I don't think he would do that. I think that's a better follow-up move in some of these lines to move the knight to e5. The knight to e5 has a lot of flexibility in the center. Um, so it is a candidate move, but I wouldn't really, you know, depend on it right away. So black, black has to do something um, to finish his development. If, if, if black does nothing here and allows white to play moves like queen to g4 and c takes d5, then he can just resign because his center is crumbling and... His g pawn is gone, so his king's a little open. The queen on g4 would be a, a good attacker. You know, that's why moves like knight f6 and knight e5 to try to resolve 
you know, what's happening with the white queen on the king side are important defensive ideas. But getting it in the right order here is really difficult. This is a this is a pretty complex position. Uh, I like to give degree exercises where my students have to think out loud for me. And I could see giving this position as a degree position. It it seems like uh, it's got a lot of uh, depth, even though there's not a lot of squares where we have to trade off to try to worry about winning or losing material. There's a lot that's about to happen in the next few moves. And setting up your pieces so that you're in a position to handle those next few moves is uh, not an easy task here. So that would be make for a pretty interesting uh, exercise. All right, so I'm going to, you know, I'm I I, I kind of still thought think that Queen F6 is interesting. Um, I think D takes C4 might be more in Nakamura's style. And there's a couple other candidate moves which are okay. So what we want to do now is just see what Nakamura played, play out the rest of the game, and then ask the computer what the top couple moves are here. So let's see what happened. Nakamura does play queen f6. Okay, and he, he took, look how much time he took for a speed game for Nakamura. That's a lot of time. He took about 40 seconds to play queen f6. So he saw this kind of complexity. All right. And Grishik does move the queen, threatening to take on d5. That's what we said would happen. Nakamura plays knight c5. Grishik says, give me that pawn. Nakamura says, I'm bringing my bishop to guard my king's side. I'll give you that pawn. Grishik hits the queen. Nakamura plays queen e5, queen h4, bishop g6, bishop f4, queen h5, knight b5. Trade queens, knight d3, rook trades. Nakamura hits the rook, hits the rook, rook moves, rook moves. Bishop takes. So here, uh, Grishik is up two pawns, but he does have doubled isolated pawns on the h file. Both sides are really short on time. They're going to have to move really fast. Grishik wants to trade, and he wants to win that b pawn and, and win the end game on the queen side. Nakamura counterattacks the bishop. There's a check. He hits it. He hit take gets rid of that bishop pair. The bishop comes back. That pawn on b6 is in trouble. Takes a pawn, takes a pawn. Now white has the bishop pair and a passed b pawn. Should be a winning position for white here. Not easy, of course, and they both have to play really fast. Here comes that B pawn. Krishik's trying to tempo his bishop. Nakamura's trying to get a draw here. Pawn on H4 is attacked. Hits the bishop. Both sides, of course, really short on time, have to move really fast. They're playing pretty well, considering how fast they have to move. I couldn't do this. Oh, Naka just lost another pawn. Oops, and he lost, put the knight in take, and he, and he resigned. All right, let's go back. Let's go back like uh, 118 moves or something. Okay. Um, rook d1. All right, so... I was looking at d takes c4 and queen f6. Naka chose queen f6. Let's ask the computer what the top few moves are. We'll shrink down the board. Stockfish 10. Okay, Stockfish 10 says white does have the advantage as we thought. And it thinks that the best move, which is a move I only mentioned in passing, is knight to c5 where white is ahead by about a quarter of a pawn. And knight to e5 right away, which I thought was premature, is not that premature. Right now it's at 0. 0.6. And uh, third best move, okay, there's queen f6 moving up to second best with 0. 0.5. So right now there's only a 0. 0.2 difference between 
the best move and the move that Naka played, queen f6, although queen f6 just got knocked down again a little bit. And now rook e8 is moving into the picture as a potential number two. Okay, very interesting. All right, so again, this is, was similar to our 20-minute exercise video, except instead of forcing ourselves to spend 20 minutes, I tried to analyze the position a little bit slower than before. Trying to, rather than just analyze it, I tried to explain why I was analyzing the moves, what I was looking at, what I was trying to do, those kind of things. When I'm actually playing as fast as I can and I'm doing the 20-minute exercise, I'm just analyzing as fast as I can. Here, I was doing a little bit different. I was trying to kind of explain what's going on in my head, trying to explain how I'm coming up with the candidate moves, what both sides are trying to do, and so on. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video and it was instructive, helps you learn how to think in chess. Chess is a thinking game. If you don't know how to think about these positions, if you don't know how to go about trying to figure out what the moves might be and which ones are better and how to evaluate them, that's the heart of the game and that's why these videos hopefully would be very helpful. All right, for my YouTube series, this is Dan Heisman. Hopefully, if you, if you enjoyed them, you'll subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.